Hello, I'm Trent aka O Trademark here. And this is New to Pro episode nine. So in the last episode, I talked about the importance of leveling up your fighters prior to incubating them. And the incubators are a really crucial part of the game right now uh, in its current state. I would say that you need to do, you should be taking advantage of the open events in order to open go for units. And then you need to be taking advantage of the damage and yen events like this one in order to grind a lot of yen. So let's kind of do an update on the team now. <laughs> now the first thing you're gonna notice is this account has had some insane luck. So I actually not, not only did I get Endeavor, a Gilgamesh and a Kaido on this account, okay? And this account only has about 10 million stars open. So one divine per 3.3 million stars open is actually very lucky. Um, this is not typical. And if you're playing, you've opened 10 million stars, I would not expect to have three divines already, but you could if you got lucky. But what I want to talk to you guys is about basically planning out your team. So I've gotten these these fighters. I've leveled them up to, you know, around 285 with the yen that I've earned during this damage yen event. But now we're kind of in this situation where we have a lot of different units which could be good eventually. Okay. So we have like this shiny Esper King that we could limit break. We have a shiny Abby that we could limit break. We have this shiny Yuka that we could limit break. Um, we also have this Prodigious Knight down here that's uh, incubating. And then we have an, an Avocado Devil. So a, a shiny raid unit that is currently limit breaking right now. So we have a, some, some choices that we need to make. Now, one huge mistake that players make when they first, when they get to this point in the game where you're trying to transition, you're transitioning out of your transition team. Okay, so you're, you're trying to get your end game team mapped out and put together. One big mistake that players make is that they level their units at the same rate, okay? So they level all of their units kind of around the same level, and that is a major mistake. Now you can level up your fighters that you're going to use to around the summon level. So right now the units summon in at uh, Yu-Gi-Oh around 280 to 285. So you can level up some of your fighters around there for relatively cheap, but if you want to decide if you want to maximize your growth and get as strong as possible, as quickly as possible, you basically need to prioritize three fighters. So the three fighters that I incubated during the time, five times time event and the three fighters which I incubated during this week were these three right here, my shiny Abby, shiny Asper King and uh, shiny Heavy Rain. I actually didn't have any of these, uh, these <laughs> divine fighters back then or I might have incubated them. But I ended up incubating these three, and now I have to make a decision. So now that they're higher level, I could do one of two things. I could push them all the way to cat, so I could push them to 305 this week with the help of an incubator and time chamber, or we could unlock some of these and we could actually fuse some of our other units, you know, get them up so my Kaido would go to 293 or 294 with the secret, and let's see, uh, 297 with this one, okay? So that is, that is one option that we could actually do, is we could basically fuse some of these fighters into you know, our newer divines and convert, convert them shiny, get a passive on them, and they would be really strong units. But this is what I would consider a small mistake, okay? Right now, if I was to, let's say, shiny Endeavor, get a passive shiny Endeavor and push him to max level, He's actually going to do less damage than if than a limit broken Abbey or a limit broken Esper King. Okay, so limit breaks are actually insanely powerful, even if they're on secrets or even if they're on shiny raid units. When you limit break a unit, you unlock a much higher talent cap, and that scales from 30% when you're not limit broken all the way up to 90% when you are. And it makes Limit Broken Secrets basically stronger than their shiny uh, divine counterparts, okay? 
The exception might be Kaido. Kaido might be strong enough base stats that you wouldn't actually be stronger than a Limit Broken or a Limit Broken Secret wouldn't be stronger. I'm not sure on that exactly. But the point is, unless you have like two divines and you're you're just looking for your third to limit break, it might actually be better to pursue a limit broken secret, max level secret first. Okay? So let's take a look at these units right here. We have the Esper King, the Abbey, and like I was saying earlier, we do have enough to actually limit break these. So we can have limit break. We can't right now because there's still a unit that's limit breaking. But we could convert Abbey. Uh, Esper King, we do have two extra Esper Kings, so we could convert those and limit break him. Or we could also do the Yuka. We have enough Yukas that we can limit break the Yuka as well. So out of these three, um, they're actually all pretty solid. So Yuka is the highest world and he has the best passive out of the three, but Yuka also is the lowest level, right? So we'd need a little bit more incubation time and limit break time to get him to max level. Um, someone like our Prodigious Knight has Ace, which is like the strongest DPS mythic passive. So he's amazing. And he's already limit broken if we wanted to incubate him. But the problem with him is that he is from a relatively old world. Well, he's from Icy Waste, which isn't that old, but it's like compared to these other ones, they're from the more recent worlds, especially Yuka. And so, you know, it, it might be better to max out and limit break, you know, one of these guys first. So here's what I'm gonna say uh, for this is I'm actually going to take this heavy rain. And even though it's a shiny raid unit with blessing, the thing is that I don't have that many other mythics to actually get him limit broken. And he's just not gonna benefit me that much in the long run. He's gonna get outdated relatively quickly. He also has the downside of sharing the shards with Kaido that we need to reroll. So Orca Road shards are very high in demand. And he's just one of those things where I think I'm not going to actually utilize this fighter. So we're gonna unlock him. We're gonna fuse this unit into something else. And now, uh, out of the divines, obviously the best divine for us to shiny is going to be Kaido. Not only because he has the highest base damage, but he also future proofs us so that when the next divine comes out, if we haven't gotten three Kaidos by then, the next divine will still will still be able to open a Kaido. So uh, this basically gives us a better opportunity to eventually get three Kaidos and limit break him down the road. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fuse uh, this heavy rain into him. He'll get up to 293. And let me just show you real quick though, a, a limit broken, the difference between a limit break, right? So like here's two 285 units. Here's my Kaido at 38Q. And if we had Kaido at 285, shiny he's doing 51Q without a passive, okay? 51Q, which seems good, compared to the ace you know it seems pretty strong because we don't even have a passive on him but once we got a passive the thing is that this prodigious knight doesn't even have a secondary passive and we're not counting his crits which are going to essentially let not quite double his damage but the ace is going to give him a huge damage multiplier with all those crits coming through so this is a good example of where uh this prodigious knight is actually uh going to be a bit stronger than our kaido right now and looking at what he can get up to, he can get up to the same level as Kaido if we fuse into him. So there's not, even though he's shiny, or it's basically about the same XP requirement to push him up. And I think this is actually going to be our best choice. So let's go ahead and fuse into here. We fuse in our ace limit, right? And now we, if we equip best, we can see now what our strongest team is. And this 293 is almost pushing 294, which is good. And then we can basically incubate these three after the damage event. But with the damage event going on right now, I did want to kind of show you guys uh, the most efficient way to farm Yen. Now, if you're obviously you should be AFKing, like if you're AFKing, you should be AFKing a boss that takes about one minute to three minutes to kill. So this boss is too weak for me. I would need to go to either a lower world main boss and we go to the main boss here it might be like a decent unit okay so the ultimate time trial is actually starting in 60 seconds and 
Uh, Far From Christmas has actually volunteered to help me out on this. So I wanted to show you guys one quick way. You can do this with your friends. It doesn't have to be someone that's as strong as this player right here. But if you cannot complete very much of the ultimate time trial yourself, what you actually want to do is you want to turn send all uh, fighters off. And then basically what I want to try and show you guys is that I'm going to send instead of attacking the boss most players are going to come in here and they're going to start attacking the boss okay what i'm going to do instead is actually put one fighter on each of the side mobs this this works if there's a lot of players in your lobby or if there's only one okay because the side mob players actually give more yen per hp so i had there's only four side mobs so i'm actually going to put two on each unit and then i'm basically just going to attack all of these all right the key is that there's more yen per HP on these side mobs than this main boss. So I'm just gonna do as much damage as possible as I can while keeping as many of these spots open as possible. This would be useful if you're like in a group with your friends and there's, you know, a couple of your friends are a lot stronger than you are. Well, you don't wanna occupy all of these spots attack positions, right? So kind of what I'm doing is I'm splitting my units up to basically uh, help now because it's only two of us we can actually fit our entire teams both of us can fit our entire teams onto the enemy but that's just I'm basically letting you know in case you had more players in your in your lobby okay so uh, we'd go ahead and we would do this we would attack the side mobs and get this more again per HP and eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition from the side mobs to the boss in order to do a yen swap so the yen, yen swap is best to do on the on the boss but the if you're just grinding the yen per hp actually you get more for the side mobs than you do out of uh the main mob okay so we'll go ahead and, and just kind of attack all these guys send our units where we can you can see we're already at 3z on this run right like the the yen earning potential of a damage yen event is just absolutely insane you want to take advantage of this as much as possible. So again, I'm just doing as much damage as I can here. If this was a room with like a bunch of people, I obviously wouldn't be at, uh, occupying the boss positions because that would be saved for the stronger people. Okay, but let's go ahead and equip our Yen team. Let's see, it's got, yep, we got all eight of them. So then we do that. Look, we bump up to 35Z. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, but now since we're getting so much, so much HP on the main boss, I'm just going to focus the main mob uh, and then I'll swap to my Yen team. And you guys can see that like with all of this Yen, I'm actually going to be opening not in the Yu-Gi-Oh world this week. I'm going to go back and open in maybe uh, Orca or maybe even in the hole to save the Yen for next event which is this next weekend there should be a, a a time and a luck event assuming that time is still able to we're still able to vote on time there should be a time luck event and i want to have as much yen and as much max open tokens as i possibly can for that event so uh you guys events are crucial this is literally the only reason that this account has been able to push through so fast is because of that five times time event and then followed by this damage event. Now look at what we're doing. We're actually earning some decent amount of yen. And we run these, you know, if we run some more UTTs tonight, we could probably get up to maybe 400, 500 Z. No problem. Like if I, if I keep running this, I'm not sure if I just AFK or if I keep running these, I'm not sure. The point is you can get a lot of yen. And I'm seeing a lot of players that are just, they're not, maximizing their incubator time they're not maximizing a lot of their uh their event time like during the damage yen event you should literally be doing time trials or afk farming yen for 48 hours straight okay so you can see he's actually asking how many multi-open tokens you would need to open 24 hours in orca that is probably one of the most common questions i get how much yen how much max open tokens does it take to open in a certain world for a period of time okay the thing is that it actually varies greatly depending on a variety of things do you have vip do you have uh how big of a backpack size do you have right um how many stars do you have and do you have the boost star boost like are you just max opening or are you uh opening and max opening at the same time right and all these factors play into how long you can actually open but I do plan on updating my sheet. I used to calculate that back when it was simpler to calculate it. 
But I will uh, basically update my sheet to have some base times at least so that you guys can get a feel for how much you're gonna need approximately. And then you can kind of go from there depending on if you have little tweaks or whatever. Okay guys, so as you can see, I mean, we got nearly 100Z off of one ultimate time trial. This is like absolutely insane, the amount of yen that you can be earning right now in the, in the current state of the game. Um, just again, this account has 440 hours on it, right? So about three weeks, this three weeks old, this account is, it only has about 10 million stars uh, opened. And the vast majority of this 356Z has been earned this weekend, right? So um, I have now I have been spending my yen to actually level up some of my fighters because the thing is I do want to level some of these units so that my team is stronger to generate more yen. Um, and we're just basically investing all the yen back into this. But now at a certain point, I'm going to start saving my yen. So like, uh, you know, tonight and Basically, I'm going to try and farm up as much in as we possibly can get. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a tiny task which opens and simultaneously attacks this mini boss. This is very valuable to stem the amount of yen that you actually spend overnight by killing the mini boss while you're basically opening stars. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to turn send all fighters off. The reason for that is let me show you if I attack with send all on and then let's say I send another attack command, it actually retreats my units. So then I have to wait for the third attack command to come in to actually start attacking it and finish the enemy, right? It basically can just lead to a lot of uh, retreating when you're not intending to retreat. But when we turn send all fighters off, when I long press on this, even though they're attacking, when I long press retreat, it retreats and imme immediately starts attacking again. That's the reason why we want send all off. And so let's go ahead and play this. Uh, this We're gonna start the tiny task recording. So I'm gonna F8, I'm gonna long press here to attack. I'm gonna max open, open. Then I'm gonna go into my uh, units. You notice I'm sorted by alphabetical order so that my units don't move. I'm gonna few selected like that. And now I'm going to actually wait for an, a spawn. I'm gonna attack again, and then I'm gonna go into a regular Q open, okay? Now I can Q open for as long as my max open takes basically to come back up. Or if I wanted to maximize the yen that I was earning, what I could do is as soon as I see the enemy in the background, I stop it, I attack, and I go back to Q opening, okay? Again, we're just maximizing the amount of times that we're killing the enemy in the background while we're opening and while we're waiting for our max open cooldown to go, go off cooldown. If you wanted to save yourself some yen, you don't actually need to queue open while you're doing this. You could just max open and that would be fine. That would save you a lot of yen, in fact, because it's less expensive to max open than it is to auto open. But nonetheless, we're just gonna kind of keep doing this. We'll do one more cycle, attacking the enemy boss as soon as he spawns. So we stop here, we auto attack again, and then we're gonna auto open for about 10 seconds and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stop this. We'll go back into here. We fuse back into Kaido. Yes. And then we stop the recording as soon as we have, we're at a complete uh, cycle. So now the max open is done, right? Okay. So here you go. This is our final updated basically progress. We're at 133Q DPC, which is 489Q during the event. It's insane that we've come this far in this short period of time. Uh, but remember that, that anyone can do this as long as you are utilizing the correct uh, you're utilizing your events. So during the damage events, you want to be farming nonstop for 48 hours. During the luck or the time event, you should be opening for 48 hours. And in between, on the weekdays, that's when you should be incubating and sitting in the time chamber, farming fruits, etc., so that you can basically convert all of your units on the next weekend. So uh, what we're going to do for the rest of this damage in event is I'm going to farm as many, as much in as I can. Like I said, I probably won't be leveling up my units anymore, but we're going to save all of this yen for the next time uh, or luck event that happens on the next update. 
and and we're very very close to start peaking on our power all right so what we want to do is this week we're going to incubate some units right on the weekdays yeah i'll probably incubate these three and then i'll limit break this yuka because the yuka long term is going to be the most the biggest damage dealing for our team uh well until we can get like a limb broken divine but uh for for now he's our most powerful unit that we have all of the uh the units for we have the three yukas we have the materials we have the secret fruits we're ready to limit break it's just going to take some time right 10 days on the limit break plus another uh you know amount of days that we need to actually max this character out we could fuse you know something into him but i think that's going to be a waste eventually what we're going to end up with is these four limit broken secrets with hopefully some decent passives on them i mean they already have pretty good passives right here and then we'll start transitioning into some leader threes and maybe even eventually convert these into uh, uh, limit broken divines, assuming that we can get enough divines for that. But that's uh, that's further down the road. So that's basically our, our game plan for now. Again, take advantage of the events, guys. So hopefully you farm as much yen as you possibly can during the damage yen event and open the entire open event. But that's it for me. Malo Albito, thanks for watching and peace. I'm out of here.